Hey, this is Chandra with a God Said Disrupt Prophetic Word. I am back with a quick message as a tag along to the message that I just posted that God said restoration is yours within six days. So he gave me additional revelation that I need to share with you um, as we go into this new video. Let's start with our prayer so we'll have um, our time in the spirit and it'll be fruitful together. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you that you allow us to continue sitting at your feet and absorbing your word and your revelation. Father, thank you for giving me further interpretation, but also giving me clarity and bringing forth um, more information with that word because you're you have promised us restoration in six days, but in that it's going to be three days of a restoration, something of a promise that comes to pass. And then another three days, we'll see the second promise come to pass. And so I know that you're going to be speaking real time and I'm here, Father. I thank you that you let us get together so quickly. I turn down my flesh so that I may be providing the word as you have provided it to me. Please feel free to add in anything that I've missed or add in new revelation, fresh pour in as I speak and share this word with your children. In Jesus name, we give all the glory and honor and we praise you. and We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Amen. So new people um, are um, coming to the channel and I thank you, Father, that you're pouring new people in every single day as your word says in Acts that you would add to numbers daily. And so if you're new, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe, like, and hit the, the bell so you'll know when new notifications are posted. But then if you um, are here for the first time, say I'm here, I'm a first timer. I would love to be able to connect with you, love to be able to pray for you as well. And then for my returners, as always, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. And if this word reaches and touches any of you and you feel led to sow, so if you feel led to do so. Now, to the word. God said, persona non gratis is your thing. It's kind of your new thing. God said, persona non gratis is your thing. So I started this with um, a, a word of restoration, and this is that is really in alignment with restoration. It's a clarifying understanding of your position that you're going into um, as we do this work. And so this revelation came to me as I watched um, Madam Secretary. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but you can find it on Netflix. But it was a um, in syndicate show that came out in 2018, I think ish, 2017, somewhere in there. But the episode that this revelation came to me through was um, but season four, episode five is the episode that Holy Spirit gave me the revelation for this. And so in that, um, just kind of a scene setting, it was where Henry was speaking with his daughter. If you're familiar with the show, Henry is um, one of the main characters. And so he and his wife um, are work for the government. And so he was um, sitting with um, Allie, who is their middle child. Um, she is in college at this point. And so they were sitting and chatting about her midterm project that she was procrastinating on. She had been given an assignment to do through her college, one of her classes for design, but she was dragging her feet in doing it. And so um, the revelation really kind of took set, uh, took root for me right at the beginning of their conversation. And so I'm going to walk you through that that scene um, section by section so that um, this revelation will unfold for you just the same. So looking up the definition for persona non gratis, um, non grata, that means it's a Latin word or phrase that basically means unwelcome person. In diplomacy, it refers to a foreign diplomat who has been uninvited from a host country, like to leave. And that's like the step before they actually extradite you or kick you out or, you know, like force you, forcibly force you out of the country. And so, but in terms of just everyday life, it, it could be someone who um, is in your neighborhood who's always a little bit louder, a little bit more disruptive. They cause disruption, even if it's for good or sometimes it's for bad, but this person basically um, ends up in a situ situation where people just turn on them um, for no apparent reason or for a very obvious reason. Um, they become really kind of the outcast out of the, the, the crowd, right? 
God said, the world will never welcome you. You are a guest. You are a visitor in a host country. And so, but you're here to, to change their broken system. And people hate change. People hate change until it brings them some kind of reward, y'all. And so being the change agent from heaven with a supernatural change transformation power, because that's what the Lord has given you, you are the poster child for persona non gratis. Like you really are. And so if you can stand in that position and know that the Lord has something for you, then it'll make more sense to you why every time you start a new job, it goes fine until it doesn't. And then it goes completely off the rail, right? It's like, it's, it was beautiful until it wasn't. So if that pattern is your pattern, then this message is for you. Um, and so I want to kind of walk you through this. And so I looked on Strong Concordance um, that this started, it first aired, this particular episode first aired in 2019. Hebrews 2019 uh, means very perverse forward, F-R-O-W-A-R-D, forward. And so, but perverse in this um, definition means a deliberate desire to behave unreasonable. And then forward means a difficult person. God said that you are encountering or you have encountered a very difficult person in this season at your job, in your in, in a relationship or whatever the scenario is that has transitioned you into being fully um, engaged in what the Lord is saying in this hour. Amen. So we want to, yes, thank that person because that person has led you to the Lord's feet um, for prayer and for, for understanding and for clarification. But you may be in a situation where you're still working or you're trying to transition out of that environment and know that the, that the enemy basically has sent this person with a full-fledged attack um, to, um, to break you down, to break your spirit, to break your joy, along with ending your assignment at this particular location or with this particular person. And so, and God may be allowing it so that you can fully invest yourself in him, fully invest yourself in what he has called you to do. And that, um, is hard, but it is su such a, a profound way for him to show forth his love for you. And so as I moved um, into looking at the research of this, Greek um, 2019 means to call at something that is to exclaim, to cry, to give a shout. And the Lord says that in uh, in this window, you shouted out loud, all right? You shouted and God said, your behavior is a symptom of being hurt because you want to be accepted. You want to be included, but they are no longer your tribe. And so it's time to build your own. It's time that you must learn my ways, God says, to build for the kingdom, for what you specialize in, for what I've groomed you to do. You need a supernatural glean session to quickly elevate you into the works and ministries and the family that I have called you into. That's so good, y'all. That's so good because that gives you a new position to stand from. And so Hebrews 4 is for the, the season. So this is season 4, episode 5. And so when I looked at Hebrews 4, that means uh, corresponding to the word fruit. It means fruit. And then um, Greek 4 corresponded to a weightless that is not burdensome from being burdensome. So the you should be going from a, a place of being in high burden, which is where you were, to being not burdened. The Lord's work, it, it should not give you burden. And so this assignment that he gave you that I talked about in the last video, make sure you go back and watch that video so you'll understand the context for this one. But um, he gave you an assignment and you've been dragging your feet. You've been procrastinating on it, not you know, pitifully, not really in full thought mode, not thinking that your highest excellent self and not giving forth your work but it should not cause you burden. And if it is doing so, that means you need to pray the enemy out of the situation because the enemy has planted seeds or gotten infiltrated into it somehow. And so, and then looking at that this was episode five, Hebrew five means father, it means Abba. It means Abba, it's so good how he connects that in y'all like that. God said, you questioning, you don't know what you were thinking about quitting that full-time job that is causing you so much anguish. God said that you are in 
the wrong position when you think that way. And so the scene time, as, as I go back into the actual episode, was it started around 1901. So you could go to season four, episode five, and fast forward it to scene um, where the scene time starts at 1901. In the Hebrews, that means a, a murmur, that is a complaint, a meditation, a musing, which is what you did when you were screaming out. And so Psalms 39, three says, my heart was hot within me while I was musing, the fire burned, and then I spoke with my tongue. And we know that our tongue has the power to create or to destroy. It can bring life or it can bring death. And so God said that your thing that was your thing when you felt comfortable doing it, now you're doing it different and it's not comfortable. And everyone else seems to be doing what you're called to do better. They're called that they're more creative, they're more innovative, they're more genuine, they're more impactful. Whose message is this? Tell me in the comments if this is your message. Type my thing with a question mark. If this is for you, right? Because some y'all like you you having this like okay I thought this was my thing and that's what happened in the episode Allie the daughter was like design was my thing it was my thing in high school but now I'm in college now I'm on a new level now I've moved up a stage and it, it, it's like everybody got the same thing as me and they're doing it way better than me is what she was communicating that was her complaint that was her her, her woe moment or woe me because I thought I was really good when I was at this lower level and now that I've I, I've um, I've studied and I've become anointed and I the, you move me into this new category you move me into this new level come on now and it, you know it, it may not be work it may be very much so your spiritual spiritual growth your spiritual stretch that the Lord has you in that you are feeling this way, you're feeling lost, you're feeling like, okay, I know I can talk to people, I know I can I can um, do do projects and I can do design or I can put music together, I can do, but it's just off. What? Why is it not gaining the traction that it just had? And so the Lord is saying that your thing, your thing is, it's, it's set up different because you're in a new place and you've got to allow yourself um, to go through the thought process. And so God said, Back up a step. If you can't find your thing, you won't find your thing unless you stop comparing yourself to everybody else in your thing. Then and only then can you begin to figure out why God chose you and why he's using you and your thing to help you move forward in ministry. Oh, that's so good. And so then it moves to roughly the time frame was 1919. And so um, she questions, she goes, am I good enough? And so then I looked at this in Hebrews and that gave, um, gave rise to um, it being um, Esther was the, the word for 1919, um, Hadassah or Esther in the book of Esther. That's her actual name was Hadassah. And so Esther 2, 7, it says, and Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter or his cousin, for she had neither father nor mother. And the young woman was lovely and was beautiful. And when her father and her mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. And so Esther, as you know, she went through that transition with her family. So she went from a stage, a position or a level of, of security and of knowing what life was about and what life was, how life was moving about to becoming totally disheveled, moving, separating um, from that life and cleaving from that old life and moving forward. But if you'll notice, God always will place someone to go and track with you. There's always someone to help you grow, someone to help groom you as a transition or as a, as a transformation assistant, as a, as a destiny partner in that window. And so um, that is what has uh, what is occurring. And so then I looked at G19, and so that's worldly, um, meaning morally, earthly, and in, in earth. And so Philippians 2.10 says, yes, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And he is the apple of God's eye, y'all. And we are the apple of Jesus's eye. That's how this works. And so God said, the question of whether you're not good enough is already answered by God. 
You don't have to answer it. God chose you because you're not good enough. He's looking for the person who can minimize their own flesh, the person who can minimize their own way of doing things, the person that can minimize and do things his way, the way he wants you to do them so that you will not um, be at a place of ownership in in the transformation. God said fear will ask the sabotaging question. Am I even good enough? Which is what Allie asked in the episode. Am I even good enough? And her father, Henry, being genuine, just as our father is genuine, says, yes, absolutely you are. And so God said that that's fear talking. That's not even you talking. That's fear talking for you. When, when that question comes up, it's fear. It's not even you. Amen. So here's what I learned in this 14 months of me only serving the Lord. So this, it has been a full year and two months, y'all, full year and two months. And so serving the Lord, what I've learned, there's no comparison. Comparing yourself to others when serving the Lord is the enemy scheme to stall you, to stop you, to delay you, to distract you. And because there is no comparison, it's not even a competition to serve the Lord because there are billions of people on this planet who all need saving. And so it's not a, it's not a competition. It's, um, it's your ego at play. And so you've got to turn your flesh down, turn down the pride, turn off the ego, um, because of, it's just not, it's just not a competition. I found that it's just not a competition as how many you can save versus how many I can save versus who, how many that person can save. God has created an opportunity for each of us to serve him, to serve him by saving others. He uses uh, this very intentional methodology of your life being the preparation for the ultimate assignment, the ultimate project that if you have ever um, if you have everything that you've ever done in life, everything that you've ever done in life, significant, very insignificant, every action you've ever taken, every non-action that you've ever taken, it was all preparation for this moment. It was all preparation for this moment. So there is no competition between you and me or me and somebody else or you and somebody else. And it, 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 it doesn't exist um, because the, um, what you are doing and what I'm doing, it's all for the same God. And, but the enemy is speaking on your behalf. When the enemy is speaking on your behalf and you're off in a rant, you've got to under separate, separate yourself out of it and know that the Lord has chosen you specifically for a very specific group of people. So who I'm assigned to, to serve is you and you're going to be assigned to serve someone else, but they're different people. And so I'm not saving the same people you're assigned to save. And so in this episode, Henry goes on to say that he learned one very specific task um, or skill out of uh, many things that he learned while he was in the Marines. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't about him learning how to fly a fighter jet. It wasn't him understanding how to read military strategies or intelligence or anything high level technical. It wasn't about learning multiple languages. It was about making a bed, making a hospital corner fold on the sheets, you know, like you see going to the hotel and the hospital is like perfectly folded. That simple task took him the farthest because it taught him that when you see a complex process, if you start with the simplest task in any project, you can then build momentum and build momentum. And y'all, that's project management. That's why I gravitated to project management in the first place is because I could see, I see very well, very complex problems, which is why I know why the Lord put me in this role, but I know how to break them up and compartmentalize them into very small money tasks and then organize them in a way that allows you get to get to the end. And so Henry goes on to tell his daughter that, um, that you um, have to look at this in that way. Start with the simplest task and then you go to the next one and then to the next one and to the next one until you get to the end and you're at the end of the project. And sooner or later, you have completed all the things that were a block for you and you gain momentum and you're off to your next assignment. And you're off to the next thing, right? That's project management. 
that's life that's what you're literally doing as we work for jesus as we work for god it is a life project management and and we're in the business of saving souls as the end result of us doing all these little small tasks this master project is saving souls that's the complex part of it but the simplest thing the simplest way to accomplish it is to just start speaking to people just start inviting people just start asking people like the the simplest thing we can't get hung up on the simplest thing because there are people who are waiting to be saved on that invitation waiting for people there are people waiting to be invited and it it all it takes is that very first conversation a very small conversation just like I'm having with you now a very intentional conversation to invite people in just the same as Jesus when he had sent the disciples for to um, find find me some food they came back with five loaves and two and two fish right and so we know that he multiplied it he did the the heavy lifting the disciples just had to go find two things go find something whatever you come back with i'm gonna make it work is what the lord said and he did that he multiplied it he he's going to do that with you and so in the last video i made mention that god said just start if you just start i'm gonna take over if you just invite i'm gonna take over if you just pick a date i'm gonna run with it if you just whatever i'm gonna do the rest of it right so god is saying just do the simplest task as henry was saying with his daughter what's the easiest thing for you to do right now to get you moving and so she responded oh let me do some you know fix some cuffs or fix the hem or something and he was like great go get it done go start it because if you start it then the domino tips and then the then it just moves into like the 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 design pattern you stand back and you're like whoa how we get there it was like that very first one just tip it in jesus name amen yes so when henry communicated about the bed they taught me how to make the bed that was around 1933 in the in the scene that's the time frame so you can time stamp so you can go back and look at that but hebrews 1933 means behave so how you behave and we know that our behavior is attached to our identity our identity in christ we behave like the father we behave like jesus we behave through the holy spirit's power we know how we should behave and so in this in this scenario, Henry is sharing with his daughter that you are a designer, do designer things and and the product will come forth and what you have envisioned will come forth. What the Lord is saying is, is that he has put in your heart an idea. He has given you an assignment and it involves all the things that you've done previously. And you may have done a whole bunch of things, which is why you're probably stuck. And so I'm here to share with you that you don't have to be stuck because he's giving you a very specific assignment that is um, of who you are. It's about who you are. And because if you know your identity in Christ and you know what your skill set is, then you should be able to move forward. But I, I get that that's not always easy. I, I do get that. <laughs> I like, I do get that. That that's what my entire 2023 was about me trying to cite, um, trying to sift through all the things that he, I'd learned. And, and, and because there are so many things that I felt like I did well with that I was at the top of my class and doing and so how do I choose how do I pick and so God is saying you don't pick he picks he picks the the thing the one thing that you're really really good at and it is going to be something that you probably have just you do it so innately because it's who you are it's a part of your identity it's a part of who you are your behavior kind of comes from it and so you are missing it and so job 37 6 says for he says to the snow fall on the earth likewise to the gentle rain and to the heavy rain of his strength so god is saying be this be this and nothing else and it it it, it takes away the burden it takes away the complication i'm calling you to do what you're called to do what you're made to do amen and so in doing so, you put yourself in a better 
a frame of operating you're in position to operate and so the greek 1933 um that means um as it means mild it means gentle moder moderation and patient and so god is saying through james 3 17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable then gentle and then willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy god said that as you do the work that you're called to do if you do it with genuineness do it from the center like the very depths of your heart it's going to come across and it's going to be received as good fruit and it's not going to have any hypocrisy or any impartiality of the world embedded in it and so it won't um, it won't um, self-destruct. It's going to produce good fruit. That is going to be of a genuine response and of a genuine um, receiving of those who he puts it before. And so then uh, somewhere in the video around 1943, um, the point is, is if you can accomplish this one thing. So Henry says, what is the, the smallest detail, the smallest thing that you can do to get moving? And so she gives him an answer. And so Henry said, even that smallest thing, if you can get it going, it'll get you to the end. It'll get you to the, to the, to the mission finish line. So I'm asking you, what is the smallest part of the assignment, the project, the call that God has given you that you can do right now? What is that one thing? And if you can think of that one thing, go do it. Go do it right now. That's what you do. That's your next thing after you finish this video. Do it. Even if it sucks, as Henry says, absolutely, because Allie asks, well, even if it sucks, yeah, he's saying go do it. God said, it's simple. Do the simple and he'll do the hard lifting. And so that'll tip that domino that I was talking about. And it creates this chain reaction that creates this intricate design that we can't see. Most times we can't see it until we're far out until the picture develops itself. Right. And so then in that the the um the end of the scene is around 20 minutes and 40 and four seconds so 20 zero four and the most important part of any project henry says or an assignment is to finish you've got to finish you've got to get to a place of finishing and so looking at greek number 2004 that means to arrange upon that is order to charge Command and join. Philemon 1 8. Therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting. Yes, you have to know that your work is needed and it has a very specific calling, but you have to do it with bold, um, a, a bold sincerity and a bold confidence of knowing that the Lord has you covered. Henry says, You'll never know what you're capable of doing or capable of of finishing until you start it. God said, just start, just start. And so the scene ended at 2010. And so Hebrews 2010 is permission, rest, and then um, release, a quiet release. And so Esther 2.18 says, then the king made a great feast, the feast of Esther for all his officials and servants. And he proclaimed a holiday in the providence and gave gifts according to the generosity in the hand, his hand of being king. And so then Henry says, get upstairs and get up there and make something in the shape of a dress. And so she heads up the stairs to, to start this thing and it removes the delay from her life. It removes the procrastination from her and from the conversation instantly that her just getting up, it moved her into propel. It moved her into pro a propelling moment. And then he didn't say, he didn't say make the whole thing. He just said, start, start the framing and the rest will come. Right. And so God is saying, just start and I'll do the rest. Start with the easiest thing for you to do, and then I'll take you farther. We will make and take turns together. You are going to elevate just starting. As she walked up the stairs, that was the emphasis was elevation. You're elevating as you're doing these steps. You're elevating as you're doing this assignment. This assignment has multiple steps in it. It is going to cause you to elevate every single step of the way. Amen? He is such a good father to guide and lead us every step of the way. He is not going to leave us alone. 
if, even if we wanted to be alone, he's not going to leave us alone. Even when we're ranting, he's not leaving us alone. He's listening. He's listening so he can help you get through it, get beyond it. So you can start your next step, your next elevation. And so that's why I'm here. The Lord has asked and assigned me to help you. Allow me to share the process of getting through Exodus, of getting through your wilderness, of getting through your next step. How do I get past this step? I'm stuck. So God said, it's my confirmation. So that's why you were led to this video. And so this invitation I'm inviting is a weekend retreat that my sister's first um, to a very small, very intimate, uh, limited seat opportunity where you can receive what you need, thy confirmation. You need a confirmation of what the Lord has shared with you. You need a confirmation of what your next step is. You need a confirmation on are you doing the sequences of what the Lord needs you to do to, to stay consecrated and to move forward and to be in a place of position so that you can continue to hear from the Lord and move strategically with him. Yes? So I am hosting a weekend retreat called Thy Confirmation. The information will be in the description below so that you may feed into what the Lord has for you in this season. This is not a time to get stuck. This is not a time to second guess. This is a time for you to get really clear, really clear on what you have been called to do, how you've been chosen, and what you need to do to move forward. And the Lord has assigned me to help you. And so I'm so very, super excited. It'll be a chance for you to know for sure. Like that confirmation is all that um, you need in this moment to know that you're hearing him correctly. Yes? All right. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe off of this video. And then those who know that they need thy confirmation, click the link and get registered because the seats won't last, y'all. They will not last. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, God said, go destroy some Ishwar's glory, y'all. Bye.